Hi, CDA family and friends, and God bless you tonight. We are, again, just excited to get to connect with you. We miss you. We are praying for you. We want you to know that we, um, although we can't see your faces and be with you in person, we have been praying for each and every one of you. We have been just believing that God is with you, that he's walking with you, and that in the moment of crisis, we can encounter God in a special, in a supernatural way. And so we're just praying that in the middle of this season, in the middle of what looks like crisis, that you would be encountering and, and getting to know God in a deeper way than ever before. And so we just pray that your hunger would be stirred up for God, that your desire for God would grow like never before. We're just believing that over your life. And if you are new, we just want to welcome you. We want to connect with you. We want to pray with you tonight. And so if you have a prayer request, I want to encourage you to leave your prayer request down in the comments tonight. Um, coming up this week, we are going to be having 24 hours of prayer and intercession here as a house, as a church, uh, virtually. We're going to be doing it virtually, but we want to pray for you. And so if you have a prayer request, if you have a situation going on, we want you to let us know and we want to in include you in those 24 hours of prayer intercession. Our pastors, our leaders, our church family is going to be taking 24 hours of just praying and interceding. And so we want you to send in your prayer requests and include you by name in those prayers. And so if you would like to do that, uh, you can leave your comment down below or you can send in text in the word CDA prayer, no spaces, CDA prayer to the number 97000. And after doing that, you'll get some steps to follow in order to send in your prayer request. We just want to be able to pray with you and partner with you during this time. We believe that it's always time to pray. It's always time to seek the heart of God for what he's doing. That's what we want to do during this season. Um, and with that, we just want to jump into the devotional for today. God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you that in every season we can come to your word and we know that we're going to find life. We're going to find instruction. We're going to find revelation of your heart. And so tonight we just take this time, we consecrate this time to get into your word. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that as we study your word, as we read your word, that you would stir up hunger inside of us, that you would stir up a desire for the things of God, that you would stir up a desire for you. And we just thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so last week we started a new mini-series during our devotionals of Fix Your Eyes and what it means, what it looks like to fix our eyes on Jesus. Our eyes being fixed means that they are set in a direction and they're being locked in there. Um, when we look at a dove, uh, some people will say dove's eyes as a reference, as a saying, and what that means, a dove's eye is known to have only the ability to focus in on what's in front of it. It does not have peripheral vision like we do. We have peripheral vision, which means I can be looking at you, looking through this camera, but I also have a sense of what's to my right and what's to my left. And I can be distracted by something going on here, something going on here, while also looking forward. But a dove has only the ability to look straight forward and focus in on what's in front of it, not on what's on the left or what's on the right. And when we look at Jesus, when we look at the things of God, when we go after God, God calls us to have single vision. I don't think that it's a coincidence, you know, when we were starting out this year or ending 2019, we heard a lot 2020 vision. And we heard a lot of people um, speak on and preach on and give words about this 20, this concept of 2020 vision. And I don't think that it's a coincidence that we are living the days that we are living in a year that is 2020. Because God is calling us not just for this time, but for our lifetime, that in this season we are called to uh, get down and to learn the art of a focused vision, of fixing our eyes always. And we can learn that in this season when we can be so distracted, God is calling us to fix our eyes on him, to have a single vision where there's a lot of things going on around us, but I choose to hone in, I choose to fix my eyes on who Jesus is, remember his words, remember his promises, and look forward to him, not be distracted by what's to my right and what's to my left. And today I want to continue with that. We're gonna continue with part three of fix your eyes. 
And for tonight, we're going to be looking to Isaiah 52, 12. If you have your Bibles, I want you to take out your Bibles. Um, take some notes tonight. Let's jump into the Word together. I want to encourage you that not, not to just be a receiver in this season, but to engage in the Word of God. To go in and seek God that after our devotional time together, uh, open up your Bible with the scripture that we're walking through and just in your own personal time with the Holy Spirit to just go into the Word of God and ask for a revelation for yourself, for your heart. And so tonight we're going to look into Isaiah 52, 12. Write that down, uh, open it up in your Bible, in your, on your iPad, on your phone, whatever you have. We're going to go into Isaiah 52, 12. And this speaks about present, past, and future. I want to talk to you about fixing your eyes on Jesus, both in the present, in the past, and in the future, what that looks like for us. And Isaiah 52, 12 says, for you will not go out in a hurry. God is speaking to the people of Israel, but in turn, we can take this word for ourselves. And he is saying, for you, people of God, for you, and you can insert your name, for you will not go out in a hurry and you will not go out in flight. For the Lord will go before you and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. And I think this is so powerful because he's speaking to Israel and he's saying, you're not going to go out in a hurry the way that you did when you left Egypt. When the people of God left Egypt, they left in a hurry. They left in a frenzy. And he says, you're not to go out in a hurry and you're not to go in a flight. And I think this speaks about the pace that the world wants us to go. There's a pace, there's a certain a speed that the world wants us to go. And the world has only two speeds. The world only has two paces because the enemy always likes to play on extremes, either way on the right or way on the left and no middle ground, no sanity. There's just two extreme paces. And the two paces that the world wants us to go in is either hurry. I want you to write this down. The enemy wants you to either be in a hurry or he wants you to be frozen. He wants you to be, um, he wants you to be in, a, in a place of fear, in a place of just passiveness. And God doesn't want us to be hurried and God doesn't want us, that, the word I was looking for is hiding. The other pace that the world wants you to go is, in is hiding. The world wants you to either hurry or hide. And we hurry out of panic. We hurry out of fear. We can look around us and we see people that are hurried out of panic, out of a frenzy, out of not knowing what to do. We're going to hoard and we're going to hurry because we don't know what to do. And God is telling his people, you are my people and the pace of your life is going to look differently. It's not going to be in a hurry. It's not going to be in a panic. It's not going to be in a frenzy. And the opposite, the other thing that the enemy wants us to do many times is not only hurry, but the opposite would be to hide, to hide out of fear, to be paralyzed out of fear, to be frozen, to be uh, stagnant out of fear. And God is telling his people, no, 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 you have a different pace. You have a different speed. It's not hurried and it's not hiding. It is the pace and it is the speed of the spirit and the word of God. It is the pace of trust. I want you to write that down today, that God is calling us to live our life at the pace of trust. You are not to hurry and you are not to hide. Both hurry and hiding come out of fear, come out of a spirit of fear where we either panic and run or we freeze and we, be, we are paralyzed in fear. But he's saying, no, 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 you have a different pace you are called to. You have a different speed. And the speed of the people of God, the pace that we are to live our life in is trust. Trust is saying, God, I believe that you have taken care of my past. God, I believe that you are taking care of my today. And God, I trust and I have faith and I have hope for my future. It is faith about what God has done in our past. I have faith that God has healed my past. I have faith that God has forgiven my sins. I have faith that God has healed me from my past. I have complete trust that he is taking care of my today. That what I will face today, God has already gone before me. And I have hope that what comes in the future, that tomorrow, he's already in tomorrow and he's taking care of it. And God says, for for the Lord will go before you. He's already in the tomorrow. He's already there so we can trust. 
so we can go at the pace of trust because God is already in tomorrow. And God, the God of Israel will be at your rear guard. What does that mean? The God of Israel, the God that's taking care of you today is also the God who's taking care of the tomorrow that's coming behind you. He goes before you, he goes with you, and he goes behind you. I want you to write that down. Say that where you are tonight and say, God goes before me, God goes with me, and God goes behind me. He is taking care of my past, my present, and my future. I don't have to live in the past. God has taken care of it. I don't have to live in a panic and in a rushing, in a, in a hurry about today because God is taking care of me today. And I don't have to live in a fear and in hiding about tomorrow because God is my rear guard and he goes behind me. And I want to encourage you today that that is the pace that God is calling us to. God is calling us to not hurry and to not hide. Don't rush out of fear. Don't rush the things that God is trying to do. Don't rush what God wants to do in your life. Don't skip over this season because there is power and promise in this season. There are things that God wants to show you and give you and promises that are for today. And so today I wanna to just invite you not to hurry, not to hide in anxiety and fear, but to go at the pace of trust. I want you to write that down tonight. Go at the pace of trust. Trusting God looks like hearing what he's saying and doing the next right thing. What's the next right thing for you? Maybe the next right thing for you today is to get into the word of God, is to serve the person that you're, that you're with, that lives in your home, is to pray and get into the presence of God. The next right thing looks like trust. The next right thing for you, friend, for me, is to trust God, to not go in a hurry and to not go in hiding, but to go at the pace of trust. In the presence of God, you are safe and you are taken care of. Again, thank you for being with us tonight. I want to encourage you to go back, read Isaiah 52, the entire chapter. Um, there's a powerful word in there for us, for us to learn and to glean from. I want to pray with you tonight. Uh, whether you are just beginning to walk with God or you've been walking with him for a long time, I want to invite you this tonight to just bring your cares, your worries to him tonight. We just believe that God is a God who is with us yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is true and that you are the one who is true and faithful. That is your name. You are true and faithful. You are true and faithful in our past, in our present, in our future. And so today we resist, we reject hurry. We reject panic. We reject anxiety. We reject hiding and fear. And we just accept and step into the pace of trust tonight. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to teach us that when we don't know what to do, that you would come and teach us what the next right thing is. I pray for every person that's watching tonight, whether they are facing sickness, disease, whether they are facing lack, whether they are needing provision in the natural or in, a, or in in their spirit and in their heart. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would enter and do a supernatural work tonight. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching again tonight. Please share this right now. Take a moment and share this video. Share this devotional with your friends, your family on Facebook, on Instagram, wherever you can. Uh, let's get the word of God out to those people that are needing a word of trust and of peace tonight. Go ahead and share this and we'll see you back again here on Tuesday. God bless you.